As we honor the memory of President Truman and his service, it is only fitting that the Special Recognition Award go to a person that may almost match the President's love of books. As he is famously known to say, not all readers are leaders, but all leaders are readers. Stephen Potter has most certainly been a leader in our community, and I am sure he has a great list of books he would recommend. Stephen Potter has served as the Chief Executive Officer of the Mid-Continent Public Library for 12 years and 34 years overall, providing essential services and resources to more than 850,000 residents of Clay, Jackson, and Platte counties. Steve is credited with creating the first website for the Mid-Continent System in 1995, seeing early on the important role technology would play in future library access. One of the most notable accomplishments is an important landmark right here in Independence, the Midwest Genealogy Center, as the largest public genealogy center in the country. This allows us to connect with our family history in new ways. Libraries play an important role in our community, not only providing access to thousands of books, but also training, health classes, places for public gatherings, and more. Under Steve's guidance, we have seen new and improved libraries serving our communities all across the region. We are honored to recognize his impact as he retires with this special recognition award. Stephen, it is my honor to give you the Harry S. Truman Special Recognition Award. You have served our community in the library for over 34 years, and your work has truly helped me personally. I have used the library extensively, and I just want to say thank you for your years of service, and congratulations on retirement, and I am honored to present this award to you. Well, thank you very much, and one thing I'd like to say is that all I ever did is come to work and just try to make our community a better place, but I would be remiss if I didn't think of one of the Harry Truman quotes, which is, it's incredible what you can do if you don't care who gets the credit. And it's all the people that I worked with uh, for the last 34 years, the people who came before mm -hmm. me, as well as the people who are still going to be at the library on July the 1st and going to be eager to continue to help serve you. So please use your libraries. Uh, they're a great investment, and I hope to see you there, but not on the other side of the counter this time. <laughs> Thank you very much and congratulations. Sure. The Harry S. Truman Public Service Award Commission is proud to honor Senator Patrick Leahy for his years of service in the U.S. Senate and his commitment to public service. We are proud to present him with the 2022 Harry S. Truman Award. Hello, it's so good to be with you. I'm Patrick Leahy, I'm the U.S. Senator from Vermont, and it's great to join you all. It's really an honor to be selected to receive the 2022 Harry S. Truman Public Service Award. I'm pleased I'm, to know that I'm joining my friend and mentor, former Vice President and Senator Hubert Humphrey, as a recipient of this award. And I thank the Harry S. Truman Award Commission, former Mayor Eileen Weir for this recognition. Incidentally, I hear that the City of Independence recently had a local election. So my congratulations to Mayor Rory Rowland, Council Member Jared Fears, upon being elected to the Independence City Council. I know it has to be an honor and a privilege to serve in leadership roles in Harry Truman's celebrated hometown. You all know this, but I think of the times I've read that President Truman was so fond of saying that independence is the center of the world. Well, President Truman used the values and common sense. He learned it in independence, and he used it to shape the world. At the United Nations Conference in April 1945, President Truman said that justice remains the greatest power on earth. I truly believe that. And equal justice and the rule of law have long been at the center of my priorities in my own public service. 
Before I served in the Senate, I had the privilege of serving for nearly a decade as the state's attorney for Chittenden County, Vermont. I was the prosecutor for about a quarter of our population. But it was a rewarding job. It was an honor then to be recognized as an outstanding prosecutor, and I'm proud to be a former prosecutor. And I've long served on the United States Senate Judiciary Committee. I'm the senior member there. And I've been the committee's chairman. In that capacity, I've had the responsibility and duty to evaluate and vote on the confirmation of every justice currently on the United States Supreme Court, and many before them. It's been a priority of mine to increase diversity on the federal bench and within the United States Department of Justice. I voted for the first woman to serve on the Supreme Court, Sandra Day O'Connor. Voted for the first Latina to serve on the Supreme Court. And I've voted on many hundreds of judicial nominations. Nominees of both Republican and Democratic presidents. But the nomination and confirmation of Associate Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson really fills me with hope. It was a privilege to support her nomination to the Supreme Court by President Biden, and I was so thrilled to be standing there with President Biden when she said, and speaking of her family, in one generation, we've gone from segregation to a seat on the U.S. Supreme Court. Now, President Truman believed in justice and fairness. He generated support for it, and he signed the Marshall Plan into law in 1948. Well, that was pivotal in the world. The Marshall Plan was needed in 1948, but today the world has similar needs. We cannot turn our back on the world. We cannot ignore the needs of millions who are suffering today. Relations between the United States and other countries and our role as a global leader are helped by our willingness to help other countries in need. Foreign aid is essential to protecting U.S. interests around the world. But more than that, I believe it's a moral responsibility of the wealthiest, most powerful nation on earth. It's the duty of an elected official to make the right decisions and do that regardless of the political climate. I love reading the histories of President Truman. And I know that he made many difficult decisions. He made decisions about war and peace. He recognized Israel as a state. He integrated the United States Army. He signed the Charter for the United Nations. He signed the NATO Treaty, creating the North Atlantic Treaty Organization did that in 1949 and countless other major decisions. I've always admired the wisdom of the Dublin-born parliamentarian Edmund Burke. Words he delivered to the electors of Bristol, he said, your representative owes you not his industry only, but his judgment. But then Edmund Burke said, a representative ought not sacrifice to you his or her conscience. Well, when President Truman left office in 1953, he came home to what he called the center of the world. He brought his approval rating of 32% with him back to independence. But now, seven decades later, both Republican and Democratic presidents and candidates quote Truman often and use him in their campaigns as a model of what a president should be. A marketing strategist would coin this sea change in public opinion and call it the Truman comeback. Well, Harry Truman proved that leadership stands the test of time. And his record has stood the test of time. So I consider it an honor to be the 2022 recipient of the Harry S. Truman Public Service Award. Thank you again and my best wishes to you all.